the digestive system of rabbit. It starts with the mouth and continues with buccal cavity, pharynx, oesophagus and into the stomach which have three parts the cardiac, fundic and pyloric stomach and into the intestine, small intestine having anterior duodenum, jejunum and ileum and into the large intestine which consists cecum and colon and into rectum and passes out through anus. As the rabbit eats food, it enters its mouth. Mouth is relatively small and present at the anterior end of the head. The mouth gives rise to the vestibule which is narrow space enclosed between ribs and cheeks externally and gums and teeth internally. The vestibule gives rise to buccal cavity which possesses tongue, teeth and it gives rise to the pharynx. The vestibule contains mucus glands in them. The pharynx is short and conical region. The foot and air passage cross here. The function of pharynx as a part of digestive tract is to serve a passage for food from the buccal cavity to oesophagus. The walls of pharynx is lined by the muscles which start swallowing movement through which the food move on. And food enters oesophagus. Oesophagus is a long, narrow, straight tube which runs backwards through the neck and thorax and passes through the diaphragm into the abdomen. The oesophagus serves to convey the food from pharynx into the stomach. The wall of the oesophagus contains four concentric tissues or coats beginning from outside. The first one is fibrous coat which is connective coat. And the next is muscular coat and it comprises of three layers, two longitudinal muscle fibers and the one at the middle is circular muscle fiber. Between the outer two layers is a meantric nerve plexus, a network of nerve cells and nerve fibers. And the third one is submucosa. So it contains numerous mucus secreting glands, blood vessels and lymphatics. And the last one and the most inner one is mucous membrane. It contains three layers beginning from outside. The first one is muscularis mucosae which is smooth muscle fibers. And the next one is lamina propriae which is a connective tissue. And the innermost is stratified epithelium contains many layers of cells and the food enters into the stomach. Stomach has three parts, the cardiac, fundic and pyloric. The cardiac is broad left part, the oesophagus opens into this. This opening is called cardiac aperture guarded by the cardiac sphincter which controls the reverse flowing of food. The next one is fundic part which is the middle or main region of the stomach. And the last one is pyloric part which connects the stomach into the small intestine guided by pyloric sphincter. The wall of the stomach is guarded by four layers of cells. Starting from outside the visceral peritoneum which is simple squamous epithelium. And the next one is muscular coat and it, it is composed of three layers. The outer layer is longitudinal muscle fibers, the middle circular muscle fibers and the innermost oblique muscle fibers. And the third one is submucosa which is a connective tissue and it has a rich supply of blood vessels and lymph vessels. And the innermost is mucosa which is again divided into three regions. From outside the muscular mucosae and lamina propriae and surface epithelium Inner, the innermost. The surface epithelium contains goblet cells which secrete mucus which helps in the passage of food. And thus the food passes into the small intestine. Small intestine is tubular which may be which may range from 2 meter to 2.5 meters and it has three regions the duodenum, jejunum and ileum. Duodenum is u-shaped loop forming descending and ascending rims and jejunum is middle part of a, middle or main part of small intestine and the last one is ileum which have which is the most coiled and long part and contains villi great length and villi of the ileum increase the absorptive surface 
of small intestine and thus the food passes from ileum to the cecum cecum is large thin walled sac present as a side branch at the junction of small intestine and large intestine it is about 25 cm long and 2.5 cm wide the cecum ends in a narrower smooth thick walled brine tube the vermiform appendix the latter is about 10 cm long the cecum serves to digest cellulose by bacterial action the progress of food through this organ is slow it passes up one side and down the other to give time for bacterial action the cecum connects into the large intestine the large intestine is about a meter long it shows two regions the colon and rectum Colon is proximal part of large intestine. It is wide about 45 cm long. The constrictions in colon form pocket-like pouches called hostra. Colon is followed by rectum. It is narrow thin walled about 75 cm long. It gives beaded-like appearance due to the presence of fecal pa- parrots in it. The rectum leads to the exterior at the anus. The large intestine mainly aids in the formation of temporary storage and elimination of feces. It also plays some important role in digestion, absorption and excretion. And the last part is anus. Anus lies at the end of abdomen and at the base of tail. It is guarded by an anal sphincter. So, now we had learned about how the food passes in the digestive system. in rabbit so we shall now study about the digestive glands which are associated with the alimentary cra- canal it includes it mainly includes salivary glands liver pancreas and intestinal glands the salivary glands are of four pairs the first one is parotid glands they are present below the external auditory canal the next one is sublingual gland which lie under the tongue and the third one is submaxillary gland which is which opens in front of the tongue near the lower incisors and the last one is infraorbital glands which lie below the eyes the salivary glands all the salivary glands secrete mucin or watery solution that contains enzymes which helps for digestion of food and the next gland is liver it is the largest gland in the body and it is dark red and spongy it secretes bile which is stored by gall bladder and helps in digestion of food and the next one is pancreas it produces pancreatic juice which is carried by pancreatic duct into the distal or ascending rim of duodenum it contains two proenzymes the trypsinogen and chymotrypsinogen and several enzymes The juice acts on all types of food protein starch fats nucleic acid and nucleotides and nucleosides and divide the food and help for the digestion and that's it in this video if this video has really helped you then do watch my other videos and like comment share and subscribe to my channel sign knowledge transfer signing off